man, that's a great sound. That's a great I, sound. I feel like someone we know, you know, holding one of these, sit, sitting in a seat. You know, if you were wearing glasses, you might look yeah, like someone I you know. Yeah, shave my hair a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? It's Julius with the Hookup Tackle. Some of you know me as Hippie. We're in store today. I found a little time, a couple weeks in between tournaments, and we're going to talk about a technique that has kind of taken the fishing industry by storm. You know, it comes from Japan. It's got a bunch of different names, a bunch of different ways to do it, and we're going to dive right into that. Let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. What a oh, stuff. Yeah. Look at Cheers, my friends. Happy Sunday. All right, guys, some breaking news. This is what's in sweep at the hook of time. What a beautiful post on fish. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that gut on that. That's a nice fish. Boom! <laughs> oh, If you guys have been paying attention to professional bass fishing or you know you kind of pay attention to what goes on in Japan, you guys have seen the this technique. It's called so many different things, right? We've heard, you know, mid strolling, we've heard, you know, just shaking the minnow. There's there's a million different ways. You know, we've been to Miki rigging in the US for a long time now, and that's just vertical. But today we're going to break down and talk to you guys about mid strolling and kind of where it came from and the couple different ways you can rig it heads we're just going to break it all down for you guys there's three that really stick out that's hover shot hover strolling and mid strolling and real briefly the hover shotting is you know real small baits real small hooks things along you know these lines you know stuff that i'm this foreign to me really small you know this is griff's alley type stuff right but this is definitely one, one version of this technique. The next would be hover strolling. So hover strolling would be the same style hook with that 90 degree, but a little bit bigger. You're, you know, you're shoving nail weights. You can kind of increase in size, but still not too big. And then what you're seeing a lot of these forward facing sonar guys do is the mid stroll. So that requires a some sort of lead head, right? Whether it's a ball style head or a head to be inserted internally in the bait like this. What I'm seeing a lot of guys doing and what I personally like is using a ball head with that 90 degree line tie. And what that 90 degree line tie does is it allows when I am making this motion of, you know, mid strolling or shaking or whatever we want to call it, I am pointing my rod tip down or up. We'll talk about that here in a little bit and I'm, I'm shaking my rod and my rod tip. And what that does with these heads, it allows it to roll side to side. And that is the whole action. That is everything we're trying to accomplish is the bait moving side to side and acting like a wounded bait fish. Another head that we have coming in that I've been using a lot is the Cultiva range roller head. Super, super badass head. We've got them coming in for you guys. A little bit lighter hook, but that's the one I've kind of, you know, cut my teeth figuring out over the last year or so. And I think you guys are gonna like that one, but Depths has multiple options. Uh, this is the RR jig head. And then we also have the spike head. And then their original one, the other head from Depths that's been around for a little while is the Mitz jig head. And this bit, this is one of the original heads designed to get that rolling action. Of course, depths, you know, they even show you on the back here paired with the Sakamoto, and we'll jump into that. One of the, uh, the better options to put on the back of this head. This technique is, is, you know, gaining a lot of popularity with forward facing sonar. And what I mean by that is, you know, we have this technology that allows us to pan around. And when fish are in these, you know, suspended situations uh, over bait balls in brush piles, this is a technique that has drawing power and you can you know it imitates what they're they're feeding the suspended fish are feeding and this is one of the best ways we've ever 
you know, had to target those fish. And it works really well, you know, a fish are in a brush pile, you cast it over them, you know, you shake it through, it draws the fish up, and most of the time they commit with other baits on forward-facing sonar, you would see that they would just come out and follow the bait. It, it's been dominant if you guys have been watching professional bass fishing tournaments over the last, you know, year. It has been, you know, winning tournaments and, and guys are being really successful doing this technique. So this technique has been around in Japan for quite some time now, and it's honestly kind of losing traction over there, right? And now we're all starting to learn about it here. This is gaining a lot of popularity, and we just felt like the time is right to help you guys, because you guys are going to start hearing about this. And I don't want you guys to think that this is just a forward-facing sonar, you know, technique. There's many different ways you can do this. You know, if you are, you know, fishing from the bank or even fishing from a boat that, and you don't have the electronics, that doesn't mean that if there's a dock that you can't present this technique, you know, by a dock post or a, a brush pile or a lay down that you can physically see with your eyes. It's no different than, you know, a crankbait or a spinnerbait. Like, it's, it's a technique that anyone's gonna be able to use. You know, it's just gaining popularity on forward-facing sonar. But this is something that, I mean, it's honestly pretty simple if you think about it. I can't believe, like, we're all in that. <laughs> we're so shocked that shaking a fluke on a jig head is great, but it really is. <laughs> it's funny that they've been doing this in Japan for who knows how many years. Exactly, And right? it just comes over here and we're like, oh my god, this is the next new thing. <laughs> yeah, right? Let's break down, you know, what tackle we're using, what heads we're using, what baits we're using. And, you know, set you guys up to be able to go out and try this and be successful. Yeah, baby. Mm-hmm. All right. So before I dive in, you know, and we talk about the different baits, let's kind of touch base on what we're looking for. The bait itself for me, I feel like has to be like a fluke style profile bait, right? Like a slender shad profile. And what that does is when I shake this bait, so without a boot tail, right? You want a split tail or some sort of, you know, bait that doesn't give off a lot of motion because the action that you're creating, if it does have a paddle tail or something like that, it's gonna overpower the action that you are, you know, trying to transmit to the bait. So if you have the perfect fluke style bait on the correct jig head and you apply that, you know, shaking matter or, you know, pump style, you're gonna get that roll side to side that triggers the bite. I've been trying to keep it simple. So I've got three options that I just keep in my boat, a couple different colors, and this is where I start. And typically I don't have to leave this zone right here. So the first one is the DRT VTS. It is a traditional fluke style bait. You know, it's got a little bit different form and a couple little fins and, you know, on the back, that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, this is a, you know, a fluke style shad bait. And that is a five inch. I like that five inch. You can use a, uh, an array of different sizes with this technique. You know, I've seen a lot of guys use a three inch bait, four inch bait. I like a five, it just suits my style of fishing and I can see it better on that forward facing sonar. So the next one would be a Depths Sakamata Shad. So this one's gained a lot of popularity. Depths has heads for, for this bait. This is, you know, kind of your mid strolling, you know, starting point is what I'm kind of starting to, to figure out. Again, nothing crazy special about this. Just a fluke style bait, it does have some fins. Man, I can't say anything but good things about that bait. I've been super successful with it. Another one that is kind of sneaky, uh, available here, you know, in the US, and that is a new Yamamoto Shad Shape Worm 5 inch. And that bait is gonna do the same thing, uh, deliver that, that shad style profile. And when applied on the right jig head, gonna get that side to side action that we're looking for. I know you like running the five inch, but why do you think some guys like running like the three or four, like the smaller sizes, like what situation do you think they would that size was excelling. So I think it's kind of like in anything, right? Match the hatch. Um, you know, if the bait's really small, obviously I'm not gonna try try to throw a five inch Sakamata on them if, right. if all the thread fin shad is really small. I think that's just a starting point for me is that five inch. And like I said, I see it really good on my, on my forward facing sonar. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why I start there. But I mean, if anything, if I'm not getting bit on that, you know, I even go to that four inch uh, Sakamata shad. You know, and I like fishing that one vertical as well. Gotcha. So maybe um, for like like uh, someone that doesn't have forward facing sonar, they or like like a shore guy, let's right? Say. Yeah. Like they can run something a little smaller and still work just as effectively. Yeah. You know, if you're fishing, you know, a pond that's got you know small bluegill fry or minnows, you know, that kind of stuff, you just find baits that kind of fit your application. And as we kind of you know talk about this some more, I have a few other options laid out that are going to fall in that you know, three inch, four inch category, because we're not just throwing five inch baits, you know, we're, th 
we're learning as we go with this and we're expanding you know sizes and figuring it out gotcha all right guys i got a handful of other options uh that fall into this category that i just want to run real quick through and you know just give you guys you know a few more um options to, to try this whether you're from the bank or you're looking at forward-facing sonar here's a couple different sizes and profiles of baits that will work for this so mega bass has a dong you know again that that fat rounded nose fluke style bait that bait right there is going to roll a um, couple different sizes depths death hatter this isn't one that you know me and cj have been playing with a little bit again that that same fluke style but you get a single tail instead of a split tail that one looks really good that one also comes in a few different sizes imakatsu huddle swimmer again just a super realistic um you know like a wagasagi style looking bait that it doesn't have uh you know a real significant tail so it's going to allow you to roll with it another one would be the raid fish roller super lifelike realistic um it's just literally like the definition of soft plastic for this technique badass one from raid it's a dope bait because raids traditionally like a shore company yeah right like they make they make their baits for that purpose yeah and it's cool to see them make a bait for that purpose from fishing from the shore too, exactly you know yeah no this is going to apply for for everybody and then these two you know when we talk about smaller sizes if i'm fishing you know trying to match that three inch hatch that real small stuff these are my two go-to's for that so the bottom up the it's fresh it's cool little bait that one is sweet man it's got like a, a half of like a boot tail on it but it's it's so subtle enough to where it doesn't get overpowered and then the last one is the last ace uh, a lot of guys in Japan are, you know, using this guy on Lake Biwa and, and catching them doing that technique. Super realistic looking. Like, yeah. are you really trying to match the hatch? Like, Absolutely. That is one of the, the best looking baits for, for that technique, for sure. So now that we've, we've kind of ran through, you know, what the technique is, a couple different baits, a couple different jig heads. I'm going to show you a couple rigged, and then we're going to kind of talk about the rods that uh i think are you know right for this technique and then we'll kind of show you how to work a little bit and go from there so here i'm holding the two most popular ways to do this one is with the jig head of course with that 90 degree and then another one is going to be uh that's the depth spike head so if you can see that is inside of the bait uh so nice super clean look you know it's got the weight in there and we just we ran that through the front it doesn't tear up the bait that bad and it looks super clean so when you apply that you know downward shaking action that bait what we're looking for is that side to side roll uh to look like an injured bait fish or you know a fish that's just kind of wandering along same thing with the jig head the thing with the jig head is you get more action from the exposed head with the weight being in the front and the way the line tie is, when I add that shaking motion, this has got a real significant roll, uh, more aggressive and kind of more drawing power, where this is gonna be a little bit more subtle. It's just gonna be, you're gonna apply the same, you know, same shake movement, but this one's not gonna move as much water as this one may be. So, you know, if you are experimenting and you feel like sometimes this could be a little bit too much action, then maybe slowing it down those winter months with that integrated head like that uh, will give you a more subtle, realistic look. So those are those two right there. Uh, I don't think you have to venture out from these two. I think you can keep it in this wheelhouse right here and uh, stay productive. So let's talk rods with this technique. Again, I'm learning this. There's guys in Japan that have been doing this for a while now. We've seen a, a mix of stuff, right? We've seen super short rods, a six foot five, a six foot six. And then I've also started seeing some guys using a longer rod. We don't know exactly why, uh, seven foot five, seven foot six. What I am noticing is there's two ways that you can effectively work this bait. And that is shaking it up, right? So one of these motions, so I'm gonna be shaking my rod tip and then picking up my slack as I go, you know, trying to kind of like if you're shaking a swim jig, right? Or, you know, trying to like kind of walk the dog like super yeah. subtly, yeah. kind of kind of one of those motions. It's not too aggressive. I'm just kind of pumping my wrist. Um, and sometimes you don't really have to shake, right? So it, a lot of the times, you cast it at the fish and you know, you kind of just reel it up to them and kind of like a Demiki rig, maybe you hop it once or twice and they eat it. So not necessarily you have to just shake, shake, shake all the time. I feel with the shorter rod, you can shake it down. 
So, you know, point your rod tip down and shake, and then with that longer rod, you can keep your rod tip up and shake. And I think that's kind of the difference between going from a six foot five and like a, even a seven six. Gotcha, longer rod to twitch up, shorter rod to twitch down. That's kind of where I've landed with it. Um, I've tried it to the side, you know, <laughs> I've tried it all different ways, shaking down, shorter rod, shaking up, longer rod, and both work effectively. You know, it's just kind of read the fish and what, what they, you know, want. We've got a few rods laid out here that we have here in the shop that I think fall under this category. So we'll start with Mega Bass, you know, we gotta stay loyal. Um, I think a really good one is gonna be this Whip It, right? So this is a six foot six Mega Bass Whip It. And what's neat about this rod is it's soft enough, but it has that backbone. And mm -hmm. I think in America, uh, not that the Japanese don't have big fish, don't get me wrong, but I feel like we fish around, you know, gnarlier stuff and brush mm -hmm. piles. And like, you know, you go to a place like Texas and you yeah. start mid strolling. I'd rather have something with a little bit of backbone if you could potentially catch, you know, right. eight, 10 pounders. Yeah, it's like a fine line of like, you need a light enough rod to work yeah. the bait, but if you catch a, you know, like a five pounder in a brush pile, you need to be able to need to be able to get it out so the whip it is a badass stick for that you still get you know that tip shake that you're looking for soft in the tip but it has enough backbone you can put some pressure on those bigger fish and um and do that this would also be a badass shore rod mm -hmm. for the mid stroll or you know or this this technique because you know if you're around trees and that kind of stuff and you're kind of skipping it around docks and you know shaking it around that kind of stuff i think this this would be a good one for you guys as well. Yeah, definitely. With how the tip loads on that one, like you can make a short little, like tight cast. Yeah, a like little roll cast, little, little pitches, and then, you know, shake, shake, shake. So that one would be tits. And incredibly sensitive. Incredibly sensitive. Okay, since uh, I am a steez boy, we have, to, <laughs> uh, we have to incorporate one. So with the longer rod thing kind of happening, we're, we're trying different rods. This is the Daiwa Steez, the one. So it's a seven, six medium light. That's gonna allow me to make super long casts with that bait and you know still get that shake. But also with this rod being a medium light, with it being longer, I feel like you get that backbone that you're kind of mm -hmm. missing with like a six foot five medium light. This one's definitely gonna be a player guys for that longer, you know, boat guys, making longer accurate casts and shaking that minnow. I think this one's gonna be sweet. Yeah, it's a dope rod. I feel like the longer rods too throw like the bigger baits better, like the five inch Sakamoto. Absolutely. Like you're gonna be able to handle that bait a little better on like the longer rod versus like a six yeah. five, you know? Mm -hmm. It's yeah, a dirty so rod, super sensitive that too. That one's gonna play for sure for you Daiwa guys. All right guys, I've got two badass sticks from Raid Japan uh, that just stuck out for this technique for me. This is the Raid Maximum and this is the Raid Anti. So we're gonna start with this one first. This is a six foot one. So super short rod, right? A lot of us are not used to a short rod like this, but let me tell you for this technique, whether you're doing it from the boat or you're doing it from the shore, I don't think shying away from a short rod like is a necessity. I think mm -hmm. it, it really does play and it helps you be more efficient with this technique, especially when you're shaking it down or you're fishing it from shore. This rod has, you know, the right action that we're looking for, that super shake, and it's super light, right, and comfortable. It just kind of checks all the boxes for that technique. Yeah, it's interesting how you see like shorter rods. Yeah. A lot of times shorter rods are meant for like techniques that you impart a lot of action right for control probably for sure and i don't know a lot about the specs on this rod or anything like that you know we're just kind of looking at rods that i feel like fit um for this technique here at the hookup we like to be bougie we like cool <laughs> shit this is right up that alley man the dope rod ah it's awesome so we're on the topic of badass rods from raid here's another one if we want to go a little bit longer and get into that you know kind of what we're used to here uh 611 medium light and that is a gladiator anti Super badass looking rod, just beautiful, right? Does a great job, super comfortable handle. It's just gonna allow you to do that mid stroll, shake, shake, shake. That's another sweet option from Raid. Okay, so general action, um, you know, we kind of showed you, you know, I was just kind of, you know, pumping the wrist with the reel. It's a very subtle action, but we're gonna try and show you why we do that. And that is because it shakes the rod tip with that subtle, you know, shake up or shake down, what that's creating is that rod tip pulsating. You get that that real moderate pulsating, you know, of that rod tip. And what that does is roll the bait side to side. So essentially, when I'm doing this, this bait is doing this. 
So when I'm shaking this rod tip down or up and I'm just, you know, real subtle and it's not real aggressive. It's just a real, you know, subtle, just, just shake. And I'm picking up that slack. It's nothing too crazy. And what that does is it's just gonna roll that bait side to side. So there's a few rod options. Reel, I'm in that 2,500, maybe 3,000 size spinning reel. Line, I'm using, you know, my, my regular braid. I'm probably gonna go like a D braid, a 13 or a 15 pound, something, you know, a little lighter that I can make a long cast with. And other than that, man, it's, it's a pretty simple technique. I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun, whether you're from the shore, whether you're in a boat, you know, I think this could be a great multi-species bait. Trout, walleye, I feel like everything eats this, right? I've been an experiment, catfish love it. It looks like a real bait fish. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. I'm excited for you guys to learn about this and get it in your hands and uh, add another technique to your arsenal. All right, well, that's a wrap guys, hopefully, this helped you guys to understand this technique. I had fun talking about it. Till next time, see you guys later. Peace. Thanks, CJ. Another one. <laughs> <Fuck. clears throat> Alright, guys. Hopefully this helps you. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. No, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most... Did I you even drink like, anything there? I was like, how do I say something really douchey? And then I just said that.